hey guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl Ju, and i am back with another video for you guys so i haven't sat down to actually talk to the camera for like it's been a long time actually because even before i had the baby i had didn't actually do a lot of sit down videos so this is the first time in a long time um but today's video i'm about to give you guys my birth story and also introduce to you guys the little guy let me show you guys and also let you guys know what his name is oh he's sleeping now he was just screaming his head off <gasps> no don't drop it but this is my baby and he's smiling i will kiss him but i don't want to leave any lipstick on his forehead oh this is my sweet baby boy his name is jacoby ayibatonte trent i'm gonna leave his name up on the screen for you guys you guys should know by now that i'm big on meanings <sighs> hey good buddy my sweet baby boy was born um june 24th 2023 i have a 2023 baby um and he's very sweet although he cries a lot he loves to be held um he loves to sleep on people he loves people to carry him um and he loves to eat a lot and part and poop a lot um, but he's the sweetest thing um, so yeah so this is the story of how this baby came you guys already know that I mean if you watch my other video the last video that I posted about um, having um, you know the delivery you would see that at the beginning I started uh, dilating and phasing at 38 weeks and so at 38 weeks I thought that uh, oh something was gonna happen I'm gonna have baby early blah 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 but nothing happened until like way past my due date I was past my due date by four days so at 40 weeks pregnant I went to the doctor and they did a membrane sweep for me um, so that you know we can get the ball rolling because after that there was also a scheduled induction if i didn't you know baby didn't come after the membrane sweep so we did the membrane sweep and i went home i actually was thinking that that very day something was going to happen but nothing happened that day um the second day nothing happened the third day i began to feel um some tightness in my stomach but it wasn't painful um and mind you before now i'd been doing everything possible to get this baby out I was walking, I was exercising, I was curb walking, going down, up and down the steps or the stairs. I, I drank okra water, I, I pumped my breast milk just to get everything to make baby to come out. Um, and baby wasn't ready, so uh, at, at the fourth, on the fourth day after my due date, uh, I started to feel like some tightness, um, no pain. And I, of course, I don't know what contraction should feel like because since this is my first time, so I didn't really know what I was looking out for, uh, but I was feeling my stomach tightening up and uh, just like that. Um, and so on the fourth day, after the whole day had passed, nothing happened. I started to feel tightness in my stomach, but with some form of light cramping. It felt like period cramps. I felt that a few times and I thought, mm, I don't know what that is. Maybe that could be contraction, but it wasn't painful enough. So I just let it go. Um, at 11 p.m. on the... 23rd of june uh, i started to feel the contractions increasing in terms of like the the cramps they felt like period cramps but they were coming up in intensity and so everybody went to sleep i decided not to sleep i decided to stay awake and track my contractions and then it started increasing like it went from you know just light cramps to like i was feeling like fire in my stomach my lower abdomen i'm like what is this pain that i'm feeling this has to be contraction but the doctor told me that if it's five minutes apart and 30 it lasts 60 30 to 60 seconds then you know it's about time to come into the hospital but well, my contractions weren't that close they were far apart so i knew it wasn't time to go but i, I stayed awake to track it so i kept tracking it tracking it i went and sat on the toilet see it just to they said uh, it helps to dilate some more so i went and sat there to dilate um because i was still a one centimeter dilated as a as 40 week appointment and i i was sad about that so i tried to do everything to open up my cervix so i sat down there and allowed it to work you know the thing to happen and around 
I think it was 1 30 or 2 in the morning like the intensity of the contraction was now it was coming very frequently and was painful it was like heat it was like fire it burned it was like um I don't know it was like period cramps multiplied times 100 it was like it's like when the sun rises and then the sun goes down when the sun comes up and like always oh, burning fury and then it goes down that's how it felt i was like oh my god it was painful so i called the hospital at 2 a.m in the morning to tell them what was happening and the nurse that answered me she was like mm, it sounds like you're in early labor um and, but she was sounded a little like she didn't believe what i was telling her i was telling her i feel pain and i, I, I was telling her this is how far apart the contractions are or were but she sounded like she didn't believe me she was like okay go take a shower and if you feel if you still feel it then maybe you should come in but go take a shower and if it goes away then it's forced labor i'm like okay so i went to take a shower in the shower i don't spend more than 15 minutes in the shower that's as if i'm having a good day um and in the shower i had like five of them like literally it's when it came and went came and went five times i knew that it wasn't braxton hicks it wasn't forced labor it was painful i was just it was a lot and then my friend elizabeth she came to the shower she's like dude what's happening i was like oh, i'm having contact she's like why did you wake me up i was like i didn't want to disturb anybody she's like look at you so she went and got ready and woke my husband up um and i told him i think it's time let's go so we got on the phone with my parents in nigeria because they they want to be a part of the birth um and so they're on the phone with me and while they were on the phone with me like video calls many times i got contractions and it was it was increasing in intensity i was literally crying to be able to get through the pain and that's how painful it was like when it comes my heart will be beating fast as if adrenaline like my heart is pumping blood very fast i'm like oh and then when it's done um and i calm down and then i can smile again and laugh with people but it was so it was burning it was like fire in my chest honestly um and so we went to the hospital when we got there um immediately we got there they were, we went through the emergency since it was like two in the morning or three in the morning um they quickly put me on a wheelchair and wheeled me upstairs and got me to the track they call it the triage or triage whatever triage um it's like the waiting room where they check you to see if you're actually going to be admitted um and so they checked me first of all i think cervical checks is very painful i don't know what anybody says that thing is painful when they put their hand in there um, so they put their hand she put her hand the nurse that I spoke to on the phone that was the one she checked me um, they were like well you're still a one centimeter or yeah they, were, they, they said I was a, a one and a half or a tight two or something like, I was still almost a two but it was very tight I'm like I was so disappointed so heartbroken I thought they were gonna send me home because you know like I wasn't dilated enough and all of that stuff and so they kept me there for a while and while I was there with them I was having contraction it was painful it was it was uh. um, and so the nurse was like let me go pee so they can take my urine sample i did that and then she came back and she was like oh you're just dehydrated it's probably forced labor you're dehydrated i'm like what this thing you're telling me is forced labor no way she was like well i should drink water and i had like a 64 uh ounce or whatever I, measurements of jar she said to fill that up with water and finish it and walk for one hour and if after an hour of walking and drinking water if the labor goes away then it was actually false if not then uh, they will see what what next to do so i try to get off the bed every single time i got off the bed to to walk it, the pain in fact more contractions came when i tried to walk so one of the nurses was walking past she was like are you having contractions i said yes she said next time just bear down and try to you know like not push really but just bear down and let it pass when you're like squatting that it helps to dilate your cervix so i was like okay so every time the contractions came i would i'll go down like a squat and just allow myself to like mm, endure the pain it was painful guys i don't know how to explain it um if you've had contractions before you know what i'm talking about if you haven't i don't know how to how to, how to explain it. it feels like putting your hand in fire let it burn you for like uh, 30 seconds and then removing it oh, oh my god your chest is like burning it's like you just eat spicy food it hurts so badly um 
and so i i continued to do that and after the one hour passed i got on the bed again and they checked me and they said i was still a two or so that was still a two after all that hard work of walking up and down i was still a two it was so disappointing um but then the the contractions didn't disappear so it wasn't false it was still there and you know they said well i can go home and labor some more and allow my cervix to dilate or i can stay if i wanted to um, and just see what happens. Well, so I decided I was going to go home. So just while I, I made the decision, the doctor came in and she said, well, it's not forced labor. Um, and she suggests that I stay, I don't go home. So I thought, okay, good. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay. So I stayed. Um, uh, and then they, they admitted me and t took me to the main, you know, the delivery room. So that's where I, I was for the whole time. Um, and then, you know, I just kept going through that pain, that contraction, it'll come. I would just, uh, it was coming with fire and brimstone. <laughs> it was coming with so much intensity. I was like, oh my God, it's coming again. Another one. And then when it comes, anybody that is standing around me, I will have to grab their hands. I just had to hold on to something like, uh, and just let it pass. Or sometimes I will hug them and I just stay in that position where I was like, uh, oh my God. Um, and so that's what I did until... They checked me again and they said I was a four centimeter dilated. Finally, I was so grateful to God. Like, thank God if I just hit five centimeter now, I'm over the bridge. Um, but you know, at that point, uh, the pain was now becoming to the point where I started to think of the future. I was like, wait, so the pain that I'm feeling now is going to increase when it's time to push and his head is going to come out. And I, you know, I was like, okay, that's it. Give me the epidural. I couldn't handle it anymore. So I told him, I was like, I mean, I could have waited a longer time, but I also didn't want the window to pass for me to get the epidural. And at the same time, I, I kept thinking about the fact that it's much longer. There's more battle in front. It's not just now. I have to still push this baby out. I kept thinking of the ring of fire. I was like, oh my God, all these things are going to happen to me. I don't want to have to endure that. Give me the epidural. So um, they called in the anesthesiologist and he came in. And I have to tell you guys, I feel like the 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 process of getting the epidural, eh, it was even for me, it was even more traumatizing, more traumatic than the contraction that I was feeling. I promise you. If I wasn't thinking of that pushing time, I could have just endured it to the end. Because I was so scared of getting that letting that thing touch my spine, like my I was just I didn't want any problems at all and so the guy was telling me you're gonna feel a little pinch and a little burn <laughs> i promise you my mind was like it's coming it's coming it's just like when they're about to inject you and you know they tell you they're about to do it he was like okay i'm gonna do it now i'm like oh my god don't even tell me just do it already um and i held on to my husband i was literally crying tears like it was just my it was just flowing down my face i held my husband like this like hold me tight don't let me move um, and so they gave me the little um uh what's it called lidocaine or whatever it was to numb the place um and then i felt the little pinch and the burn but i finally got the epidural and uh, i was well rested and mind you i hadn't slept so after getting the epidural i was able to sleep um some hours i was very hungry but they wouldn't let me eat any food um so i just had to endure it until um towards the evening time uh, they kept coming back to check me over and over again um, and then finally sometime around uh, nine was I think it was no no it was like eight something in the evening um, she came and checked me and mind you I couldn't feel anything I knew something was happening my legs felt like jelly they were very heavy and jelly like um, and she came and she checked me again she was like you're a 10 I was like are you serious I'm a 10 she was like yeah um, but before she came to check me, I think I felt, I started feeling like I wanted to poop. Even though I had the epidural, I was feeling like pooping feeling down there. And so she was like, well, we're going to get ready to push. Mind you, before, before she said that, I started to shake uncontrollably, right? Um, and they said, oh, it's just a side effect of the epidural. Well, so I thought, but the shaking wasn't going away. I was very cold. Like I was shaking like someone that had malaria. And so I asked for blankets. I'm like, give me blankets, give me everything. But then when she came in and she said it was time to push, she said, we're going to take all these off you because you can't push with all these blankets on you. 
but i i couldn't explain it guys i felt like i was dying like the cold that was on me was on another level i was shaking so badly and you know she said you have to push i'm like i can't push i'm not gonna be pushing like this i'm cold i'm cold give me blankets cover my head she said no we're gonna take everything off of you i'm like okay give me socks she said no socks and then she said i have i had a fever she said that i had an infection i'm like infection how i'm guessing all the checks that they were doing i'm not sure but you know she said i had an infection i still don't even know what name the infection is um but she said my fever ha my fever had to break so they need to take all these clothes off of me i'm like I i'm dying just cover me please they said no everybody said no they took all the clothes off me all the, the blankets and then she decided to give me some antibiotics um and she brought them and she put it in my iv i, I didn't feel it immediately i didn't even know if anything was working all i knew was i started to pray like I broke into tongues. Like I didn't even know when the tongues started coming out of my mouth. And then my friend Elizabeth, she started, she held my hand and she started praying. She, in fact, she held my whole body. She started praying over me, praying over me. Oh my God. And my parents were on the phone with me. Um, and then of course they were praying at home too. You know? And after a while, she, my mother-in-law kept telling me, Judy, calm down, calm yourself down. And my husband always used to tell me before now, like when we come out of the house and it's winter time, I will be shaking uncontrollably and he'll remind me to breathe. And he'll say, straighten your back. Don't arch your back like this. Straighten your back and be bold. You're fine. You know, he, he kept reminding me of what he used to tell me before. And so I, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to remember. I'm just, I'll just think as this is just a, a winter time and I'm cold in the winter you know and i started to calm myself down but i know it was not just my mental anything it was god literally like the prayers and the lord decided to have mercy on me and you know after a while my whole body started to calm down i was still cold though but i was holding myself and then it was time to push and so i started to push the nurse came and i was pushing and pushing and pushing um, they put a mirror right there so I could see what was happening and I pushed I saw my baby's head coming out I could feel it even though I had the epidural I could feel you know every single push and every single You know how his head was moving and everything imagine if I didn't have the epidural I'm like uh, this probably would have been ten times worse than this. I don't know um, And finally I could see his head come to the the stretching point right there um and then the nurse told me to hold on and not to push anymore. Like I think that's what they call the ring of fire. And even though I had the epidural, I could still feel the pressure right there. Um, she said, don't push anymore. The doctor wasn't there yet. The, my doctor wasn't there yet. So she said, just take deep breaths and don't push anymore. And so I just, just breathe, breathe through, you know, that moment. And then finally, after like 15 minutes the doctor finally came in and they were like okay ready to push one more time and i did Ooh, and that one push my baby just came out <laughs> like i thought the head will come out fully and then you wait and push again for the shoulders to come out that one time the doctor she barely even put on her gear before the baby just slipped out and they just put him on my chest oh my god oh my god first of all i was like i think it's the okra water that i was drinking throughout but i don't know at the end of the day it's good and the baby came and they put him on my chest he felt so warm like really warm on my chest like he was comfortable in there um and yeah jacoby was born on june 24 2023 at about 9 42 p.m and oh my god when i saw him i was like jesus <laughs> omega naya <laughs> I'm like Jesus thank you because this can only be you and in that moment just like that I became a mom like from someone that I never expressed labor pregnancy labor and delivery before in a split second I became somebody's mother like I was you know now a mom and um, it was such a beautiful experience my husband was crying my mother was crying Elizabeth the staunch girl she doesn't cry <laughs> <laughs> me i didn't cry like tears didn't come out of my eyes but i was very emotional and i was thankful to god um and yeah and that's how it happened and we stayed at the hospital for about two days before we were sent home and baby was healthy they checked him and everything and everything was well that is my story guys that is my story on how my baby was born my sweet baby his grandmother in nigeria oh oh no 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 his grandmother in Nigeria calls him Perewe. Perewe. It means successful man. Mwah. It means rich man. Mwah. My sweet baby. Mwah. 
he loves to be held like you have to carry him all the time so guys that's the end of today's video oh by the way if i i'm not always posting videos and all of that that's because i am preoccupied with my child i'm busy although i haven't given up my youtube career right uh i love making youtube videos as long as i have the time to do so and i've just been very busy these days like tending to him and trying to understand motherhood and my life and everything and so i'm not always posting videos it's for a reason but i hope to get back to it soon and if you guys have any video ideas you would like for me to post leave it in the comment section for me and i will do well to respond to them and see how i can you know make those videos thank you guys for watching today's video and i will see you guys in my next one bye